Zero accounting software. Receive payment on invoice. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Gonna zoom in a bit, holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel at the 175% zoom in. We're gonna be opening up the demo file, but we'll do so by resetting the data and opening it up. Gonna reset the demo, then it's gonna open it up so we don't have the same stuff in there that we did last time. Really love that feature, by the way. Gonna hide this item here opening up our major financial statements in a new tab like we do every time right click in the tab up top and duplicating duplicating the duplicated tab by right clicking and duplicating again then go into the middle tab accounting drop down instead of going to the reports i'm just going to go right into the favorites right here to the balance sheet which might be a little bit faster tab to the right and then we're going to go to the accounting drop down this time the income statement right there that's in our favorites it's the starred report Back to the balance sheet, changing the date range in the drop down. We want to have a custom range and going on up, up here to the 2022, 2022, and the 31st of 2022. Update it. That's my auctioneer voice. Updating the file. Da -da 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 -da. Back to the first tab. Okay, so now we're going to enter an invoice so that we can receive the payment. Just a quick recap. We're looking at the revenue cycle, the accounts receivable cycle, the customer cycle, which at the end of the cycle, we expect generally to receive money for goods and services we provided. Quick recap of the different structures you might have depending on the industry you're in. Gig work, for example, you might be able to just turn on the bank feeds and wait till something clears the bank and then record the deposit and revenue. But in a more a difficult kind of cash based system, a step away from the ease, but still cash based would be like a food truck situation where you get paid at the point in time you provide the goods and services, but you can't really wait till it clears the bank to record the sales transactions. Or this time we're focused in on the accrual system, which might be applicable in like a bookkeeping company or a accounting firm, a law firm, landscaping, something where you have to do the work first, bill the client, invoice the client, and that results in accounts receivable going up. And then we're gonna have to receive a payment on that that will then be deposited into the system. So last time we focused on the invoice, this time we're gonna be focusing in on receiving the payment. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna make another invoice. We're gonna make the invoice again, but we'll make a little bit more simplified one this time. So I'm gonna hit the plus button, have an invoice, just this is the first part of the process. AAA customer again. And so everything looks good, but down here, I'm gonna make a new item just so we can see the item, but I'm just gonna make it a service item so we don't have to deal with inventory or sales tax. That'll make it easier. So I'm calling this item, let's call it two since we did item one last time. Item two, we'll say it's a service item. So I'm not gonna do this one. So I'm not gonna have a purchase. I'm not gonna track the inventory. I'm just gonna say the unit price is a thousand dollars or whatever. And then the sales account, if it was, uh, I'll just put it to sales revenue of some kind. We're not gonna deal with tax at all. We're just gonna say tax, uh, no, no tax. We'll just say no tax and that should be good. So let's go ahead and save that. So there's the thousand dollars. This one, it's gonna be an easier kind of invoice. It's just gonna increase the accounts receivable due to it being an invoice. The other side going to revenue driven by the item here no inventory you have to deal with no sales tax beautiful easy let's go ahead and approve it instead of saving it as a draft and all that we'll just approve it right here because we looked at all that other stuff last time we're not focusing in on the invoice this time we're focusing in on the receiving of the payment so if i hit the drop down here 
in the business dropdown and we go into the invoices, we can see that invoice has now been populated. If I just take a quick look at what happened to the balance sheet and the income statement, balance sheet, accounts receivable, should have increased. So if I go into that receivable, just a verification of it, did that indeed happen? Did that happen? Yes, it did. 10-4, roger that. 10-4, roger out. There it is. And then if I go back up top, the other side should be on the P to the L, the profit and the loss, the income statement. Tab to the right. Tab to the right. Update it. Skip to the left. Tab to the right. There's the sales. Let's just verification on that one. Can I get a check? Can I get a check on that one? Do you read? Do you read? the 1000 there it is yes i do roger that 10 4 roger out back to the why why i'm not in an airplane what are you talking about with this i'm going to right click again just to check the verification report duplicating it and we can double check that accounts receivable which is our focus at this point with another report going to the accounting drop down reports and this time we're gonna go on down to the payables and receivables. And we'll, let's go to the aged receivable detail report this time. Aged receivable detail report. This is gonna give us support for that receivable account. So there it is, the 1000 right there. If we look at all the detail, the total down here for everybody that owes us money, 10,172.63 should match what's on the balance sheet 10,172.63. However, when we're working in practice, now we're trying to collect on this money. So now that's where we are in our story. So we're gonna go to the first tab now. When we're trying to collect, we're probably gonna go to the business dropdown and sort our invoices. As we saw before, we, we got all the invoices. If we have drafts, they'll be here. The drafts are not included in accounts receivable. They have not yet been recorded awaiting approval once again they have not finalized they're not actually awaiting to be paid they're going through the approval process no financial transaction effect up top the ones awaiting payment those are the ones that actually are included in the receivable we would then expect to be getting payment in some way shape or form on them as we'll record uh, with this item so then once we have it it'll be of course going into paid and so on. Now we also might check those invoices by going to the contact dropdown and customers, contacts and customers, and sort through it this way, which you'll see the dropdowns up top in tabs. If I scroll in just a hair more, it's a dropdown this way. We can go into this particular customer and then we can find the invoices thusly. So we can, if they're questioning a particular customer is questioning us, or we got a payment from a particular customer, then we might go into it in this way, right? Otherwise, we might go into it in the other format and just look through the, you, you were sorting out who owes us money to try to collect on it. So let's say we got $1,000 from this customer, then we might go into here and we could say, I can, I can go into the invoice here, I could go into the bottom here and say we've got a receive of a payment on it. Or I can go up top, I can go to the invoices and I can, I can uh, select the awaiting payment invoices. And then we could select this item and say we've got a deposit here. Now, if I go into this item note and say we've got a payment on it, the next question is I can go down here and say, okay, amount paid let's say we got paid in full the thousand dollars so i can put the date of the payment let's say it was 120322 or let's just 1203 let me report in the future let's see if it allows me to say it happened in the future and then we're going to say it was paid too now this was where it gets a little tricky because we could put it directly to the checking account but note it if you have multiple people paying you like cash transactions or possibly credit card transactions, you gotta be careful in terms of your bank reconciliation process, which you might be doing with the bank feeds or you might be doing with, uh, with a bank reconciliation, just a standard bank reconciliation. So just remember, if I go back to my flow chart here, that we're gonna say we invoiced somebody and now we're gonna be receiving the payment. Now, 
if I invoice something, someone and they just paid us with an electronic transfer or a check, then typically I can just put this directly into the checking account at this point in time when I receive it. And that will work just fine. But what if they use like a credit card or they're paying through a credit card or like some other intermediary payment platform before it gets to our checking account or it's going, uh, they're paying us in cash. In that case, and the cash is the easiest to visualize, if I get multiple people paying me cash, then if I deposit it into the checking account at this point in time with multiple different cash payments, let's say we got like five payments of $5 and I put $5 payments five times into my checking account in my books, but then I deposit it into the bank account as whatever $25 lump sum, it's gonna be difficult for me to reconcile what we put on our side into the books to the bank account. I'm gonna to have to do some adding the bank feeds aren't going to match as easily. It's going to be a, a pain. We want to make that reconciliation process as automatic and easy as possible. And therefore, you might want to put it into a clearing account. And then and then when you make the deposit, you group it into the format that's going to be showing on the bank side so you can match the bank feed or match during the bank reconciliation. So that'll happen possibly if you collect cash or possibly if you have credit cards because the credit cards might group multiple sales transactions into uh, one grouping, right? And if you're at a cash register, we'll see the same kind of issue. You might be collecting cash sales if you put them all directly into the checking account and then you go to the bank at the end of the day and deposit them in one lump sum, you can have an issue uh, checking your data to the bank. So you wanna make that as easy as possible. So just to deal with that added wrinkle, which I'm going to try to deal with a more complex scenario. If you do not have that more complex scenario, you could just put it into the checking account. But I'm going to say, let's try to set up another account, which will in essence be a clearing account. So to do that, I'm going to go to the drop down up top and say, this is going to be accounting. Let's go to our chart of accounts. Now I'm going to try to make it like a bank type of account, a checking account. Notice that it doesn't allow us, the system doesn't allow us to just like add an account and select like bank account. We have to use the current asset, but I want to make it a bank account because we still kind of have cash. So it'll be up in the cash area. So I'm going to make a bank account, which usually it tries to connect to a bank feed, but I don't want to actually connect it to a bank feed. So let's try it. We're going to say add a bank account. It's going to try to act like we want a bank feed. I'm going to select a bank just to make it happy. So it'll let me set up an account but i'm going to say skip the bank feed i'm not doing the bank feed and i'm saying don't connect to my bank i don't want a bank feed but and then i'm going to put the account name it's going to be i'm going to call it undeposited funds account and the type uh type i'm just going to say other account number 555 i'm just making one up and then continue because i don't really have a bank account i still wouldn't have a bank account in practice it's just a clearing account that I'm trying to set up. So now if I go into the accounting dropdown and I go into my chart of accounts, now we've got this undeposited funds, a clearing account, not a temporary account. Temporary accounts are income statement accounts mainly that roll into the equity. This is a clearing account that serves a specific purpose, will go up when we have cash on hand so that we can then group that money or credit cards that have been sales that we're gonna group into a certain format, the same format that's gonna show up on the checking account when we make the deposit there so that we can match our data in our system to the checking account using the bank feeds or the reconciliation process as easy as possible. Okay, so to do that then, let's go back in to the business dropdown Let's go into the invoices. And let's say I'm gonna receive on this invoice. I'm gonna actually make two invoices so we can see it, but let's do this one first. Let's say this is on 1203.22. Does it let me do that? Yeah, 1202, 1203.22, paid to. Now I've got the undeposited fund. That's what I want. I won't put any reference number and I'll add it, boom. So then if I go up top, I can check it out and say, let's update. So now undeposited funds went up by the 1000, clicking on it to look at the detail. 
and we see the information and it's a receive payment type of form. If I drill down on that, it takes us back to the form. If I need to edit it, I can hit the drop down and I can, I can remove it if I had to. So I'm gonna then go back and go back again. And the other side is in the accounts receivable, the A to the R, which is up top too, right there. Boom, accounts receivable. And we'll scroll down to the end. So there it is. This is what we typically expect to happen. We make an invoice, then we receive a payment on it. It goes up, it goes down. Note accounts receivable, like all other accounts other than cash, doesn't have the variety of transaction types, sources, for example, because cash is the lifeblood of the company and therefore involved in every cycle. No other account is in the same way. If I go into the last tab or the second to last tab, this is, which one is this? This is the AR. So if I update the AR, then I can see uh, this item for here for the AAA. Hold on a sec, I gotta change the date custom date and I put out to the 31st. Okay. So now the AAA is gone because the, the receivable is gone. But the point is that this ties out still 917265. And if I go to the first tab, we have then 917265. If I then go to my first tab over here and I went to the business drop down and invoices, now it's been moved out of awaiting payment to awaiting payment here to paid. So that looks good. And if I look at my contacts drop down and I say, okay, let's look at my customers and I go into AAA, I could see that activity here. So if there's a question, I could say, okay, invoice paid and so on. Okay, so then let's do one more. I'm gonna make another invoice and just do the process again. And let's say this is for BBB, just to be very creative here. Man, you're creative with your name, I know. I am I have a gift of naming stuff. So this is gonna be, let's say it's item two again, but let's change the price. Let's say there was two of them, two of them. So this is gonna record the sales, increase in the accounts receivable, the other side going to revenue. I'll just go straight to the approval. And so there is that. And then I'm gonna go back into the business dropdown and go into the invoices. And then I'm gonna imagine we got a payment on this one, so a waiting payment. There it is. Let's imagine we got the payment and that was the 2000 paid also on, let's say, December 3rd. And I'm gonna put that into undeposited funds. Add. So there we have it, now it's been paid. Now the point I just wanna point out here is if I go over here and say update, now I've got 3000 in undeposited funds. Let's imagine we got cash, that would be unusual, but or a credit card. And either way that that full 3000 is now going to be deposited into the checking account, which is good, which is actually down here because it's overdrawn. So it's a liability because it's been we owe the bank money, it's overdrawn. But if I deposit all that in the checking account as one lump sum of 3000, either a cash deposit or the credit card or whatever platform that's helping us group our sales deposits as one lump sum, I want to make sure to put it into the checking account as one lump sum. If I don't do that, if I put it in there as two separate items, then it's gonna be hard to match to the bank, either matching it to the bank feeds, which helps us to reconcile or in the reconciliation process. That's why you might wanna use this clearing account. If you're just getting paid electronic transfers and they're going right to your checking account, then you don't need that middle step possibly and you could just put it right to the checking account. So just be aware of that. Credit cards mess that up. Cash transactions often mess that up. But if you don't have, if you're not dealing with those, then you, you might be able to go right to the checking account. Just be aware of that issue because you want to make the bank reconciliation a vital thing for every company, large and small, easy. So we'll talk more about that next time. Mm -hmm.